everybody, Olivia here. It's time for another Canva Tip Weekly. More like Canva Tip Monthly, am I right? Haha, <laughs> to be a small business owner. Uh, I appreciate everyone's patience as I do try to make this a weekly series, um, but I did a lot of coverage of Canva tips, and so I'm trying to really bring you things that pull design lessons from different places, and I got a good one for you today. You may be wondering, hey, Olivia, why do you have your Squarespace site up? This isn't Squarespace Tip Weekly, though let me know if you want one of those. Uh, this is Canva Tip Weekly. Well, these right here. We're going to be talking about thumbnails, aspect ratios. What in the world does all of this mean? How do I choose a thumbnail? How do I make one in Canva? And of course, you guys know I wouldn't leave you without giving you actual templates. So I made you some actual templates, and I just froze right there, but I made you some actual templates of blog thumbnails and we're going to go over it today. Now I'm a Squarespace designer through and through. I do not touch any other platform. So this is what I have to show you. So by golly, this is what we're doing. Now you're also going to notice that mine has a lot to do. Uh, so we're actually going to start a fresh dummy blog so that you can see. So over here in Squarespace, I'm going to start a blog. Who knows? Maybe I'll start writing journaling or something. Oh no, I have custom code. One moment. You know what, why not? We're gonna start with a blank template. Just so you guys can see, like here's how you would start a blog in Squarespace in the first place. Very easy. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because my site has so much custom code that you would not be able to tell like what's out of the box, right? So we're gonna come over here to pages, hit the plus sign, and then start a blog. Um, it doesn't really matter which one of these you pick because you're gonna edit it anyway. And then of course you're gonna notice what on earth do I do with these? What are these? How do I design them? What am I doing here? Let's go into the tips and tricks. First of all, let's focus on Canva first. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, I'll be talking more about Squarespace tips, but this is a Canva tip weekly. So if you come over here to edit section, you're going to see some layout options. Like I said, you didn't have to choose. You, there's a couple of other things here, basic grid, and then this bad boy. What is this? Aspect ratio. You mean you're blogging and they want you to decide what size everything is? I mean, come on. So you're gonna see a couple of these things and because you are not a designer, you probably are like, what are these? Well, I'm here to tell you. These are ratios, which means that you can actually use a variety of sizes as long as the ratio is right. Um, because you can, of course, make these bigger or smaller. So they can't exactly tell you, oh, it's a thousand pixels by 800 pixels, because what if you decide to make these bigger? It would blow out the resolution. So they are ratios. By making them bigger, I mean you could come over here and have uh, three columns and see, now these are smaller. So we're going to go by ratio. What on earth are these ratios? Well, by golly, do I have them ready for you. <laughs> So a one-to-one -one ratio is a square. That's gonna be your Instagram 1080 by 1080. A four-three ratio, you can see, is a little bit squatter. It's a little squatty guy. Um, you could do like an 800 by 600 pixels, a 1200 by 900 pixels. Those are all great dimensions for your blog thumbnails. That is what I have chosen to provide to you today. I love a 4.3, I think it gives you a little bit more meat. Um, I'm gonna show you how to easily resize that, however, but I am going to be providing 4.3 blog thumbnails for you today. Uh, then there's 3.2, which is just a little bit thinner, and guess what's also 3.2? If you flip that in 2.3, anybody got any guesses? It is Pinterest pins. So you could double team this. You could create blog thumbnails that also double as your Pinterest pins. If you're a Pinterest person and you want your blog to go on Pinterest, could be good to go ahead and make them all like this so that they work on Pinterest as well. So this is 1,000 by 1,500. That is the Pinterest size. Then you also have the 16.9, which of course is long and skinny. And if you're like, huh, that pixel dimension actually looks pretty familiar, it's because it's a reel. <laughs> a reel or an Instagram story, this is a vertical format, but for blogs, it is the horizontal, it is 16.9. So this is a little bit of an overview about ratios, 4, 3, 3, 2, 2, 3, 16, 9. And these are honestly my suggested sizes to keep your blog thumbnails small so they don't make your site load really slowly. I also would recommend saving your blogs 
as JPEGs. I don't often say that, but um, because this is so many graphics on a page that have to load, you really don't want it to take too long, right? See, this is already loading a little bit slowly. So how on earth do you even make these? Well, if you decide to go the Pinterest pin route, then my biggest recommendation is going to be to select and use Canva templates or get something off of Creative Market that's really consistent. You can see there's just oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of Pinterest pins. Um, stick around and I will judge some of these. But for now, um, here, I got it, here you go. These are four, three blog thumbnails. You guys are welcome to use these. Um, you can definitely change their colors and I'm gonna kind of go through them and show you a couple ways to edit them. Now you might be wondering, hey Olivia, should I have my blog title here? Like you can notice that this one does not and this one does. Let's go over it. You're going to notice that on, oh my heavens, let's go back to my articles. Articles, we're already here. You're going to notice that I sometimes do and I sometimes don't. That's because I'm a wiffle waffler. Um, but most of the time, I only use just a photo. Here you go. Because Google cannot read your photos. It does not read photos. It just sees photo, right? So always make sure you keep your title enabled on a blog. As pretty as blogs are that only have their thumbnail, you really need this. And notice how big mine are. That's for SEO. <laughs> I don't ever write something that just says how to write text. That doesn't really tell Google what I'm all about. So I write things like how to write a value proposition for service and product based brands. This is my friend. Well, I think she's my friend. Hi, Sarah, if you're watching. Uh, Sarah Moon, I think she is the SEO queen and you're really going to see that she does the same thing. She uses just, she uses squares. First of all, they're gorgeous and she has a distinct style. Um, and you can see how her blog titles are very SEO optimized um, and that sometimes she does have a title in here if she's reiterating a point, but other times she just uses stock photos or her own photos uh, involved in her thumbnails as well. It's really just going to depend on your strategy, but always make sure you prioritize getting actual text on the page. You want this actual text on the page. Now, if you're still undecided about the sizing, um, you can just use like a ratio generator. So for this one, I decided to do 800 by 600 pixels. Um, don't forget if you lock this, so let's say you want it to be bigger. If you lock this, it locks in your ratio, right? So if I took this to be 400, well, now it's 4.3, it's a 4.3. If I wanted this to be 1200, it's 1200 by 900. Your ratio is going to be locked in. So if you're really like, oh, I just don't know, I know it needs to be a 3-2, well, start with a 300 by 200, lock it, then do what you need to do, 1,000 by 667. That's a great ratio there. You should be good to go. So blog thumbnails, let's go back to that. I've got a 4-3 right here for you, and if you decide you want to, like, oh, these are so big and chunky, I would really rather them be a 3-2, well, let's do 3-2 lock it. I'd make it a little bit bigger, but it's a little small. Do a 600 by 400, and then you can just hit this resize button. Resize, and it'll resize this whole thing to be 3-2. I'm going to undo that because I don't want that. Let me go over the choices that I made and why I made them. So here, um, you always want to make sure that your text is readable. Like, I know this is sexy. I know. It looks cool. Oh, isn't she gorgeous? It's fine. I'll allow this one as long as you darken your background, take your transparency down, and then make your background black where this text pops. Try really hard to make sure that you have contrast. Don't forget, people wear glasses. People have a hard time seeing. So with this one, I'm actually also going to bump this up. I know it's elegant. I know. I know we love tiny text. We love how elegant it looks, but that's really isolating for people that have a hard time. We wanna make our content accessible to everybody. So I made all this a little bit bigger. This is looking great. I honestly would even do a little bit bigger here. Fantastic. So just make sure that your photo here has uh, lower transparency so that we can really make the uh, black have a higher contrast here. Don't forget, you have access to, if you're on Canva Pro, they have stunning stock photography, right? And you could always click the uh, little three dots right here and then see, oh my gosh, cottage core. Let's check it out. Stop. I mean, come on. 
easy peasy. And then you could swap this out, replace background, see how that's hard to read, take the transparency down. Sorry, take the transparency down, easy to read. Gorge, I love that. Cottage core, here for the win, right? <laughs> Um, now, don't forget your Canva license states that you cannot just grab these photos. These are not your photos to use. You do have to use them in a Canva design. So that's why huh, here, if you just want to use Canva photos, just make sure you're putting like a color bar and maybe a tiny logo, not a tiny logo. I misspoke an icon logo, right? So I use, um, I have my icon logo. I don't know where that's at. Who knows where I put things right here. So I might take this little icon logo where my um, lightning bolt is really easy to see and place it right there. And this would make a great set of blog thumbnails, especially if you took the time to change the color of them. Next up, we love a layered, you could do category here. So mine would be like Canva tips, <laughs> right? Um, or you could even put the blog title right there. Another great opportunity for a stock photo or one of your brand photos. If you want to keep it really spacious and clean, this is a great way to add that aesthetic space to your blog thumbnails while still getting an image across. You could have on the blog, category here, or just on the blog, let's go studio, and then never have to change the text. Um, this one, if you do a lot of Instagram graphics and maybe you want to write about one, go ahead and put that in. Don't forget to add your little photo right here, and then you could change the category or you could say whatever your blog is. Maybe it's on the blog, maybe it's Canva Tip Weekly. Um, you could change that. And then changing the background every time would give you lots of different, lots of different uh, thumbnail options. You could always do a cute collage if it's more of a personal post. Uh, this one works really well if your photos tend to be more top heavy. So if it's photos of you, for example, like all of my photos of me are going to work better in this format because if it's in the center, it would cover my face. Uh, so great example is, oh gosh, there's so many. Which I do recommend, obviously. Um, so like something like this is going to be better, well, case in point, you're going to want to have this so that you can peek out over the title. So that's going to work for those of you who, with more headshots. Plain colors, again, you can never go wrong with like a large uh, right here. Now, um, you could also pull a quote. It doesn't have to be the blog title so that there's not two blog titles. You could also do like a pull quote. Um, and then this one again would look amazing as like different colors. Like imagine you just rotate these. Chef's kiss. Um, don't forget, you can also cut yourself out. That's what I do for my YouTube thumbnails. Um, so my YouTube thumbnails are me which I need to change, but you know, who has the time? I either do a computer sticking out or just headshots of me. So these are all, these all work uh, really beautifully. Um, and then last but not least, here's another larger box, which allows you to put um, something in the background without sacrificing text contrast. That is really important. Amazing. So that is your Canva tip uh, is to use Canva, use this template, have a lot of fun, go through retroactively. Um, now, if you're still following along, let me give you some other tips if this is just too much. If you are like, good heavens, I literally could not ever keep up with this. I got you. My first tip is going to be you always need to figure out what's your style. <laughs> like, what is your style? Are you cottage core? Are you bright and colorful? I am bright and colorful, which means that I have invested obviously in brand photo shoots. I've invested in what we call flat lays. So I have my own, you can see here, all of these are my brand. <laughs> they are bright, they are colorful, they are fun. Um, but I also, when I need filler, I do have a stock photo style, which I'm right here, stock. I do have a style, which is, you guessed it, more bright and colorful. I did pay for these because somebody took the care to do really stellar ones, and that is Color Joy Stock. So you might just come through here and say, yes, I really want my blog and my articles to be amazing. So you might invest. The, this is a monthly subscription. Look at how gorgeous these photos are. These are along me. So just for 40 bucks a month, you could start up your... Um, uh, you could do your blog for a couple of months and then be done. Um, you could also get packs of things. Uh, Creative Market has packs of stock photos as well. I just highly recommend it. You might also say, Olivia, I have zero buckaroos. I get it. I get it. Let's show you the zero buckaroo version. 
when you're in your blog post, you need to go over here to the three dots, the three dots, the three dots. Once you click on that, you click on settings, and here we are. This is where you actually replace that image. Now, if you're a Squarespace girly, like I am, uh, they have an integration with Unsplash. So this little button right here, search for images. If you click on free images, these are all us fam, no attribution, no anything at all. You go to town. Again, this is why it's so important to work with a brand designer or to work with somebody um, uh, or to just take an afternoon in, in soul search, right? So I know that my brand is bright. So I might do bright desk and see what happens. Um, cute yellow chair, some like bright flat lay type stuff. Um, I might try orange notebook, right? Orange is a brand color. I know. Oh, cute. Um, you might use a bunch of these. Look how perfect that is. It's a bunch of limes. Um, really getting conscious of your stock photos that you use, or maybe you're talking about finances in one, type in finances, here you go. Here's a bunch of great free photos, right? Um, last but not least, let's see what they have for cottage core. <laughs> oh my goodness, these are gorgeous. Can I just live here? Now, if you aren't a Squarespace girly, don't forget, you can just go to unsplash.com. However, these are too big. You also need an image resizer. You need to resize your giant photos. For reference, Unsplash gives you photos that are so big, you could print them and mount them and make them wallpaper. They're basically that large. You've got to resize these. They are way too big. You can come over here. This one, this is fine. Upload your photo. It needs to be smaller so that you cannot destroy the internet with your blog. So just make sure you've got that. Unsplash is a great resource. Pexels is another great resource if you wanna to try to get things that feel a little bit different from the status quo. And then Squarespace in particular will auto crop. So if I decide I love this horizontal cottage core here, but I'm telling Squarespace that I want 4.3, well, by golly, it's gonna be cropped. Ta-da, it is cropped. My last tip, um, at least for Squarespace, that I'll leave you with is that that does not then transcend into the Squarespace itself. I know, I didn't do it, don't yell at me. I, I, I didn't do this, this is not me. Um, you have to actually add things into the blog post. So, in short, Aspect ratios, just taught you, they're basically ratios that mean that you can do any sizes. This 2-3 is also a Pinterest, so if you just want to do that, then you have just got to have a bunch of Pinterest pins, basically, and blog thumbnails. My recommendation is one of these, and it's either to upload stock photos from an invested source like ColorJoy Stock, um, or you can use this handy little set here and have a lot of fun putting in... Um, putting in uh, your own, maybe choosing a style and running with it. And I recommend trying to do a quarter at a time or just running over here and making pages. I hope this was helpful. This is a little bit longer. I wanted to cover a couple of different themes and tips and tricks. Uh, thank you so much for watching Canva Tip Weekly. I'll see you next week.